Hi, I'm Andrew Levine, the CEO of Coinos Group, where we're developing the Coinos blockchain, which will have free accounts, free transfers, and free smart contracts. These features, in addition to the technical innovations that will make Coinos the most upgradable and the most scalable smart contracts platform in the world, will enable developers to build amazing decentralized applications. But this doesn't mean that developers will be able to do whatever they want on Coinos. Coinos still imposes limitations in order to make the platform economically sustainable and to maximize user experience. In this episode of the Coinos Group podcast, I chat with Michael Vandenberg, co-founder and blockchain architect at Coinos Group, about those limitations and how developers can begin building their Coinos applications while we're still working on the testnet and the mainnet. Michael, in my experience, people tend to overestimate how much of their application belongs on the blockchain. As one of the most experienced decentralized application developers in the world, having helped launch the Steam blockchain and Steamit.com, can you help people understand how they should think about the design of their application as a whole? How do you think about what should go on the blockchain, what should go in a smart contract, and what shouldn't? You know, we're not reinventing smart contracts. Smart contracts are smart contracts. They work a little bit different on, on Ethereum and EOS. Um, you know, our contracts are kind of borrowing a little bit from both um, and kind of will probably fit somewhere in the middle. But, you know, just because we have a fee-less blockchain doesn't mean that you can do anything you want. Like we still have to manage resources and there still is a resource system in place that we've called, we're calling MANA. Um, and all transactions are going to consume MANA. Just so happens that that MANA uh, is non-transferable and everybody gets some mana for holding coin. Uh, the, the big difference is that mana is also able to be delegated to other users, um, similar to how we were starting to get, you know, we had the, the steam power delegations. We are taking that basic concept and dialing up to 11 and approving upon it on also looking at both uh, sender and receiver payer um, semantics so that your smart contract can pay for the users. So when you're building a smart contract on, on Coinos, it's not like you just can do whatever the heck you want. You can't, you still need to work within limitations. And so understanding how smart contracts work on existing platforms currently still is still beneficial to that because like you, you know, think about it like you're paying with fees and then you know, minimize the footprint of your smart, smart contracts to minimize the fees, that is still going to be the best strategy for building a smart contract on Coinos because it will minimize your mana usage. Um, the benefit is not having to worry about the poor user experience of your users necessarily needing to hold um, a large coin balance, if any coin balance, really. Um, it's all, it's about the user experience and less about the smart contract itself. And so spending time understanding how to build smart contracts well before Coinos exists will still help you build coin, uh, smart contracts better on Coinos with the advantages of the improved user experience that we are bringing to Coinos. I always just view it as what are the components that you need decentralized consensus about? Like, obviously, like, Blockchain is used for cryptocurrency. Assets require a decentralized consensus because one person saying, I have a million Bitcoin and everyone else disagreeing with them is a really big problem, right? That needs a decentralized consensus, therefore it goes on the blockchain. Me sending you a private message does not need a decentralized consensus because I can send you a message and you can receive it. And frankly, we don't care what anybody else thinks about that. We've now communicated. It does not need a decentralized consensus. Like just using those two as, two as, as examples because I think they're the extremes, but I hear people all the time wanting to do private messaging on a blockchain and it infuriates me because it's the wrong tool for the wrong job. Um, that being said, blockchain does, because it, it's decentralized nature, and using cryptographic keys for authentication can be 
effect effectively the, your public key infrastructure for a private messaging solution. So private messaging can be integrated with a particular blockchain by using the same keys that the addresses of the blockchain use that helps provide a seamless user experience, but you're not actually using the blockchain for implementation of that aspect of your application. And so like that's, let's say like that's the line that I draw in the sand is, do I need decentralized consensus? Um, are the actions that this user is taking, like do they impact other people? If that, if you know, if that user were to act in what you would consider a wrong manner, uh, would that negatively impact the other users? Um, and as a general rule of thumb, if it would, then that probably needs a decentralized consensus. And if it doesn't, then it probably doesn't need decentralized consensus. I hear what you're saying about having people learn how to build smart contracts on existing platforms because a smart contract is a smart contract is a smart contract. And yet it seems like when people do look into those platforms, they almost get lost in the complexity of them and wind up thinking that they need to put as much of their application as possible on the blockchain, which is exactly what we don't want them to do. Why do you think that happens? I think some of that is how software development has evolved over time. Like most web applications are still like, whether or not they're using the exact same, uh, the exact same software, uh, like they're still kind of following the, the early 2000s LAMP stack, right? Uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, these days we're probably looking more like, you know, Linux, Nginx, um, in like Node.js, right? But like the idea is still there, like there's, and, and uh, maybe you're still, you'll, you'll still have like MySQL or a SQLite or a NoSQL database on the back end or something else. Like you still have your web server, uh, your language of choice and a database and you slap all your data in that same monolithic database, right? That's just kind of how web applications have sprouted. Um, that's the natural evolution. And so now with blockchain, I think the tendency is people want to throw everything on the blockchain. They want to use the blockchain as their, their, their MySQL database. Um, when really not everything that originally went in that database needs to go on the blockchain. And so the challenge is you probably will still have a centralized database for information that doesn't need to be decentralized. And now you have to build an application that can communicate with both of those databases um, and do so efficiently and correctly. I think that's the unique challenge. And then now you have um, you know, other aspects of the, the blockchain is not really something you control. It's out there, you can interact with it. Um, and so having to build a, a, an application that can respond to the blockchain maybe not behaving as you want it to provide like that creates unique challenges to building blockchain apps, which is why there's not as many blockchain apps as there are traditional applications. But any developer, I think you can spend the time, figure out where those lines are and develop those, app those app applications in the correct way. Um, I mean, they'll have a better, they'll create a better user experience simply because users, like you'll be paying fewer in fees or mana or whatever, you know, resource system you're on, um, as well as you'll have, you should have lower development costs or, or not development, but uh, you'll have you know, lower administration costs because building on blockchain is expensive. We're trying to do thing, build a new blockchain to do your, like I, that was in my opinion, one of the big banes of Steam was Steam was doing things on the blockchain that didn't need to exist on the blockchain. And that incurred additional overhead and costs that were, you know, negative to the success of, of development. But we're also developing Coinos to make doing that faster, easier, and cheaper than on any other platform. Yes. And part of that is how we are developing um, well, we're, our Coinos types or our, um, our, our serialization for, for uh, uh, all the things that can happen on the blockchain is that is being used for both smart contracts as well as will be used for our client libraries. And so 
our dream is, and our goal really, is the same languages that you're writing your application in, you can also write your smart contracts in. And so you, you know, developers can be um, in sort of one ecosystem. Granted, that doesn't solve all the problems because just because you have some crazy library that does exactly what you want it to in say, you know, JavaScript doesn't necessarily mean that that library, you can just pull into a smart contract and have it do everything. Like there are limitations, but um, you know, there it, it's, we hope that it'll help bridge that gap. It might seem like an incremental step forward, but I do believe it is a bigger leap forward. Um, simply because, you know, while say, you know, EOS is using uh, their uh, Wasm VM and there are multiple languages that can compile to Wasm and uh, Wasm is gaining more and more support, you know, week by week, you're still kind of stuck. You're still stuck with C++ contracts. I, I feel like that's a failing on block one as a developer. Um, to not provide uh, more opportunities for their developer community to build where they want to build. Um, so, I mean, on paper, I think it looks more incremental than it is, but I, I truly believe it's a, a pretty giant leap for the industry um, in focusing primarily on developers, like the technology is getting to a very mature spot within industry and making developers happy and excited to build on your blockchain is going to be one of the primary, I believe one of the primary things that distinguishes one blockchain from another in the next several years.